Hey everybody, it's Ian the Off Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. Today I'm going to be using the Pantone Color of the Year for 2020, which is classic blue, to do some fun and winter themed cards. I think that the classic blue color is a perfect color for winter cards, and I can't wait to see all the things that are gonna be the classic blue color as they come out in 2020. If you're unfamiliar with the Pantone color of the year, basically Pantone predicts what color it thinks, or the company thinks, will be the most popular and most used color amongst everything. And it's this weird like cycle where it's Pantone says that they are predicting the color that's going to be most prevalent when in fact it seems to be more of the fact that like these companies are waiting and listening for what Pantone says the color is going to be, and they start making all the things that are similar in color. I don't know. It's this weird loop thing that happens, and I know a lot of companies pay lots and lots of money to get that color in advance, so that way they can start making all the things in that color. It's crazy. What can I say? Anyways, every year I like to start my videos off by using that color in trying to take that as inspiration to create some sort of card or craft or whatever. So today I'm going to use the classic blue color on this card. I think it works perfectly with the Simon Says Stamp Snowflake Builder stamp set that they just put out. I love how it all comes together. The blue, the snowflake, everything. It's just, in my opinion, pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and see how I put this card together. To get started today, I'm going to be using some Canson Watercolor XL um, or XL Watercolor from Canson or however those go together. Um, this is cold press paper. It is 140 pound weight and I've cut this down to just a little bit bigger than four and a quarter by five and a half. We're going to be making an A2 size card, but I wanted this a little bit bigger so that way when I, I think I'm going to die cut it, we'll see during this process what ends up happening but um, that way I could kind of choose where I wanted my die cut to be picked from. So anyways, that's what we're gonna be doing and starting off with. So now what I'm gonna do, I have some Distress Ink in Blueprint Sketch, which is very similar, if not exactly the same color as the Pantone Color of the Year. So I'm gonna use this and we're gonna basically do some ink smooshing. Um, I guess it's, it's hard for me to remember because I remember Laura Bassett, she did the ink smushing with the acetate, but we're just going to be putting the ink on the craft mat here and, and smushing it into it. Anyways, you'll see what I mean here in a moment. Let me get this all set up because I need some water. Okay, I've put down three drops of the Distress ink. Um, this is one of the re-inkers, by the way. I don't know if I said that or not, but this is a re-inker for the Distress Ink Blueprint Sketch Pad, but I'm using it directly um, for today's project. I have a little squirt bottle here, and I'm just going to hover over the surface of my... Uh, that's the only bad thing about these squirt bottles is you can't do it straight on. Otherwise, it doesn't quite work. I know this doesn't look like it's doing much, and honestly, it's really not, but... Here in a moment, you'll see the magic. Uh, the reason I'm not doing it closer is because if I squirt here, it will end up squirting out all over my desk. Trust me, I've done it before. Don't make my mistake. So I'm doing it just kind of like little spritzes here to add a little bit, and I'm already seeing some, yeah, it's a losing battle. Anyways, so anyways, I'm gonna keep squirting it and just get it nice and wet and moving. And once I start dipping my paper into it, I'm gonna use the rough side. Once I start dipping my paper into it, that's really gonna help start to move the colors around. Ooh, that's pretty already. I wish I could just freeze stuff like this, but anyways. So I'm gonna dip that again and get some more pattern and texture to it. And then once I kind of get it started where I want it to be, then I'm gonna hit it with my heat tool so that way I can kind of freeze this and then go back into it and dip it again to create some more texture.
All right, I think I like it like that. As you saw, it was a process of kind of dipping into the wet and then drying and then dipping back into the wet and drying and just this constant process of going back and forth um, until you get a result that you like. And I'm pretty happy with this. It kind of, to me, looks like it's kind of freezing or a, kind of like a cold ice water bath, if you will, or I don't know. Um, that's kind of what I see whenever I look at it. So. I think now what I'm gonna do is clean up my extra ink and then um, finish out what I'm gonna do for this design. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut this piece so that way it's a little more flat for when I stamp on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little purple tape and just uh, tape this uh, die onto where I feel it's most appropriate. I feel maybe like that might be pretty good. So I'm gonna tape this down and then run it through my die cut machine and we'll come back after that. Now that I've got my piece cut out and die cut using the rectangle stitch, stitched rectangle die from Simon Says Stamp, I really like how this came out by the way, uh, I'm gonna use the Simon Says Stamp Snowflake Builder stamp set. This is a brand new one and I think it works perfectly with the cold frozen, if you will. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put my piece here into the um, Tim Holtz stamp platform, and I'm gonna get it prepped with um, the anti-static tool. You probably can't hear me over the rattling of the cellophane, sorry about that. Um, but I wanna use the largest stamp in this uh, Snowflake Builder stamp set because I think it's gonna work perfectly for the front of my card. Just, I think like right about there, right? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Anyways, I'm always bad at like perfectly placing stamps, but anyways, so we'll put that right there. I think about more or less, maybe. <laughs> anyways, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm using the clear side of my stamp platform, and I'm gonna use my anti-static powder tool to really make sure that um, if something isn't 100% dry, that it's really, really um, dry now and that none of the oils from my skin ended up collecting any of the powder Where we don't with the embossing powder where we don't want it So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all prepped up and I am gonna stamp this one Twice I think I don't know I this other part of the snowflake is supposed to go on the inside We'll see maybe I might not use that. I don't know. I'm gonna play around and see what happens. Okay, I've powdered everything up. I'm gonna use some Versamark ink to ink up this um, stamp. And then I'm gonna use some alabaster from Brutus Monroe embossing powder to um, give it that nice, beautiful white look. It came out beautifully. I just need to heat emboss it now. Remember when you're heat embossing on watercolor paper that you be very careful not to heat it for too long, otherwise it soaks into the paper. Now it's time to do the inside of the stamp. And I think it's always fun trying to line this up exactly right. And it's it's always going to be a little off for me because obviously I never seem to get it quite right. Even this um, snowflake is a little bit off, but that's okay. No one's really going to notice in the long run. Uh, I'm going to stamp this up. I should have used my anti-static powder tool for, first just to really make sure that none of the powder gets stuck where I don't want it. It did end up sticking in some places where I didn't want it. Um, but you know, that's just part of the game. And on this card, it's not so bad because it kind of looks like snow flakes anyways, like little pockets of snow. So whatever, you know, it's fine. All right, there we go. It's not centered for sure. It's definitely over to the right a little bit, but it's fine. And it came out wonderfully. I really love how this looks and I think this is gonna make a great card. So um, my paper is still a little warped. I will take care of that when we actually put it onto the card base itself. For now though, we need to do some sort of sentiment. We don't need to, but I want to put something on the outside of it. And there's many different things that you can put on the outside. Uh, greeting we have the little banner and I really want to add this banner I'm just debating whether I want to heat emboss it or do I want to like regular stamp it all right here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take this little banner stamp and we're gonna stamp it in versifying ink that way I can see exactly what it's gonna look like and 
Worst case scenario, I can still cover up that ink with the embossing powder. So it kind of gives us the best of both worlds because we kind of get to test it out before we test it out, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm gonna stamp this in the VersaFine ink first. Like so, and that actually looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. But, you know, I still feel like I want to do the actual sentiment itself using the embossing powder. So we're probably gonna do that in embossing powder. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking my sentiment and I'm placing it in the banner. I am gonna use, once again, my anti-static powder tool. So that way, I'm always afraid that I'm gonna like shoot the lid off or send the powder going everywhere. Anyways, I'm gonna really make sure that I powder this up because I really wanna make sure that the VersaFine that I just put down doesn't end up um, attracting that embossing powder. So I have my little sentiment and I'm using my VersaMark ink once again to ink it up and then we'll stamp it and hopefully none of the powder sticks to it. Well, I mean, it sticks where I want it to. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay, so this didn't quite turn out. It may not show up on camera exactly like it does in real life. It didn't quite turn out the way I expected it to. Um, it looks a little choppy. The embossing powder didn't quite fill in the letters like I had hoped for them for. Also, it's hard to see because there is a little bit of white right behind the word one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to my silver embossing powder. I've placed this back as best as I can into my stamp platform and I'm gonna ink it up again using the VersaFine ink and I'm gonna switch for my second layer of embossing powder to the silver embossing powder from Ranger. And my hope is that it will um, I know that the powders kind of, they don't exactly layer on top of each other, but my hope is maybe if I can build up a big enough base that the silver will take over, kind of. I don't know. We're going to see how this works. All right. Well, that kind of worked. That actually worked out a lot better, and I can leave that, I think, just as it is. Unfortunately, these, like, block letters are a little too chunky for my embossing powder because my embossing powder filled in the like the N in the word snow and the N in the word one. So it's kind of not exactly the, probably the best to use the embossing powder for this sentiment, but it's fine. It's totally fine. Okay, I have my card base here, which is the standard A2 size card base, uh, four and a quarter by five and a half, this way, this way, and then, you know, anyways. Um, and I'm gonna use my Tombow Extreme Adhesive um, on this snow piece because it is so incredibly uh, warped. And I really want something that is really, really gonna hold this down nicely onto my card. So I'm really gonna make sure that this is as well glued down as possible. Probably could even use some liquid glue if I really wanted to, but I hate having to wait for liquid glue to dry. And true to form, I get it a little crooked on there, but you know, this wouldn't be an off-kilter card if it wasn't a little off-kilter, right? It's always fun to think outside the box and play with the Pantone color of the year, especially when I have distress inks and oxides that are that color, so it makes it a lot easier on me because I'm able to pull from my stash of colors. But it's fun to play around with it, and I challenge you to play with the new Pantone color of the year for 2020 and see what you can come up with. If you'd like to check out some other videos that I've done using the Pantone color of the year in years past, Click up in the iCards and check out the playlist that I have for you there. It's pretty fun to see all the different colors that have happened over the past few years. I think that's gonna do it for today's video. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, let YouTube know that you like my video, and then hopefully YouTube will share it across YouTube land. Also, don't forget, if you're not already, hit that button down below that says subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and get great updates every time I post a new video or go live. I said subscribe weird, I don't know what happened, but if you want to, go ahead and hit that button. You can also get social with me down on my social media links in the description below. Make sure to say hello and get social with me. I hope everybody has a great day, and remember guys, normal just a setting on the dryer. Here's to a great 2020. Bye!